Okay, folks, what I like to do um, as a final check, and, you know, I'm not dealing with fractions of a gram here like you would for a racing engine. But I originally kind of learned how to rebuild engines from two people that built racing engines. Um, so, you know, when you build racing engines, you'll actually get into the fractions of the gram on each part and make sure these things are exactly balanced. What I'm looking for is no more than four or five grams of difference between all the components uh, when they're completely assembled. So I take cylinder piston number four, 1,085 grams. Piston, oh that was number three, this is number four. That's number one, okay. So here's number four, it's also 1,085 grams. This one's 1,086 grams, that's fine. And this one, 1,083 grams. So all one or a, one and four here are identical, and uh, two and three are a little bit uh, different, but all well within a specification. And I do the same thing as I take my upper and lower bearings together. Always put the set together. And then if that set's different, I might mix it with another set and see if I can make them as close as possible. 31 grams. 31 grams. 31 grams. 31 grams. Those are all fine. So then the other thing is I'll, I'll measure my piston rings. Got 8 grams. Eight grams. Alright. Eight grams. Eight grams. Okay, that's my first set of rings. Then I'll take my second set. These are heavier, I can tell. Twelve eleven grams. Eleven grams. 11 grams 11 grams so I just like to make sure that all these guys equal each other and then again on my third set saber let's see those really have kind of a couple of components to them and we'll just go through them all this kind of gives you a chance to kind of inspect things Okay, here I have to re-zero. Yep. Two grams. Two grams. Two grams. Two grams. Just kind of my final quality inspection. Make sure everything's consistent. Two grams. Two grams. Two grams. Two grams. Two grams. See, that one's saying one gram. Oh, I got re-zero. Two grams. Oh, I got two stuck together. I was like, five grams! <laughs> two grams. And two grams. So now you also have to deal with there, there's fractions of a gram with each part. So when you add them together, are they consistent? So if I take a complete set, this, and get two of those, and one of these, I have 10 grams. All right? Now I take two more of those. There we 
gentle. In one of these. Eight grams? And ten grams. Hmm. Let's see here. Do I have this right? Well, I have three of these. That would be the reason. Okay. Eight grams. Eight grams. Eight grams. Eight grams. So, what you can also do here as a further test is then take those, this one, and one of these. And what do you end up with? 27 grams. Set that off to the side. And now we'll again do this one this one and one of these 27 grams so these parts are very consistent and happy with that not bad for cheap Chinese rings anyway, you know. twenty seven grams Right, 27 grams. Now I'll throw a set of these on there. 58 grams. Let me read zero. Oh, I got plastic touching it, that's why. Fifty-seven grams. Right, that's what this one was. Yep. Fifty seven grams. Come back fifty eight. Let me show you this all right. So yeah, there's one gram more on this set. Yep. I guess I'm okay with that. And there's one gram more on this set. So these two sets together are a gram heavier. So on my pistons. I know one and two are the same, and uh, just double check them here again. We'll figure out where these two heavier sets are going to go. One thousand eighty five, one thousand eighty six, one thousand eighty four. So one of the heavier sets will go on this, and then one of the heavier sets will go on this. So number four and three will get the two heavier sets of rings just keep things as balanced as we can you know as the RPMs pick up on an engine even a few grams of difference is a lot in the way of g-forces on a rotating assembly spinning 6000 RPMs um, and on a racing engine of course that's even more serious because you're talking higher RPMs and more horsepower. So that's just kind of what I do. 
And so remember when you're weighing out components, if you weigh them out, that together the components can add up to more or less. Um, and just if you have a couple that turn out heavier, put those on your two lighter pistons. All right, um, we get to work testing and gapping these rings. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, start measuring the gap on the rings. Um, if there's not enough gap, we can always file them and get more gap. Um, if there's too much gap, there's not a lot we could do about that, but get different rings. Um, but hopefully that won't be the issue. Um, but better to know now, right? So basically I just have my uh, numbers here and you can see um, it'll tell you like the top ring compression ring width um, and then we're going to do the next one is uh, compression ring gap top and we see it can be from six thousandths to twelve thousandths so ideally we'll aim right in the middle of that number um, but uh, as long as it's within spec, I'm not going to be like, oh, it's, it's, it's on the tight end, so I'm going to file it so it's in the middle. I'm only going to file it if it's outside of spec, just because I really don't like filing rings. <laughs> um, I, I don't think I've ever had to file any rings when I build an engine. Um, I know that when you build racing engines, however, you do that often based on how much boost it's going to have. And, and those types of things you might need to put more gap in the rings uh, but that's mostly because of how hot the engines gonna get and how much they're gonna expand um, on this stock build as long as I'm within spec I'm perfectly fine with that so um, I'll go ahead and show you here how we do this okay so what I'm going for here according to my paperwork is six thousandths to twelve thousandths of clearance. So here's how I was trained to do these. Um, is you push your ring down in here sideways and get it down like a good third of the way or so and then you turn it sideways. Then you take a piston and you push it down with the piston which will make it level. Just make sure your piston is right even with the top here. Pull the piston back out. Now, you'll see here's your gap over here, and that's the gap what we're going to be measuring. So, we're going to start with our minimum measurement here, which is six thousandths. And we're going to see if that fits in this gap over here. It does fit. So I'll go ahead and step it up to about 10 thousandths, and that's what that looks like to me, about a 10 thousandths gap. It's tight, not quite, oh, it goes in the top, but not quite going in, it's just starting the corner. So let's go to about 9 thousandths, if I can find it. Here's our nine thousandths. Nine thousandths fits fine. Um, it's just got a little bit of drag, but it's seating all the way into the ring. That might even be, you might almost call that an eight. It's a tight nine, but that is within spec. So now I'll take and turn my ring sideways again. And just carefully pull it back out without stretching it yeah. and we're good to go on that one so now I'll do the same thing for my next compression ring and I'll also take and wipe these off with a towel make sure they're clean make sure everything's clean a little piece of dust can really throw your measurement off Yeah, we'll put that in sideways. Turn it, so, turn it up like that. Then we'll take our piston carefully. And we'll push that down. 
Brush is level. All the way around. And then let's just try nine thousandths on this one too. Nine thousandths is going through this one pretty easily. I'm just going to make sure my gap here feels nice and level when it does. So the gap on this guy, compression ring gap, second ring, is 9.8 thousandths to 16 thousandths. So, let's take the 13 thousandths. Try that one. Thirteen does not quite fit. We know ten did fit. I'm just curious what it actually is. There's twelve thousandths. Twelve barely fits. So we're at twelve thousandths. So we're within spec on that ring. Okay, I'm going to take it and pull it, ideally, away from the gap side, and then pull her back out nice and easy, like so. Now, we are ready to measure our next cylinder. As far as these, I've never measured the oil scrapers. There is a specification but with them being so thin and stuff, it's really hard to measure these. So I've never measured these, and I don't know too many people that do. So now we're good ahead, and we're ready to do cylinder number two. And we're just going to repeat that process uh, through all of these cylinders, uh, basically. But that is how you measure cap. Keep a good eye on your numbers. Probably a good idea to like mark these off here. So compression ring gap, top ring, and then compression ring width, compression ring gap, second ring. Boom. So those are the two I'm going to check now on every cylinder. Okay. All right, folks. So that is how we measure uh, the rings. Like I said, I always just measure the two compression rings. Um, I've never measured those bottom. Uh, oil rings and scraper rings whatever you call them uh, I was always told don't worry about measuring those um, but people that taught me how to build engines so I don't know if that's right or wrong but that's what I've always been trained and that's what I've done on the few motors that I built um, and uh, what we'll do in the next video is actually get these rings on the pistons get the bearings in them get them slid down in the cylinders um, unfortunately, I can only work on this a couple hours a night, so it takes time. Um, Wesley's here. I think he wants to say hi to everybody. Hey! Yeah, what are you going to tell him? Uh, thumbs up. I'll tell him to give him a thumbs up. Thumbs up! And subscribe. Subscribe! Alright. Thumb work. <laughs> Don't fall in the heater. Sorry. Alright folks, I'll talk to y'all later. It's time. Frugal Prepper. Fun times building engines.